Hey groups, good to be with you guys again. I hope you're able to enjoy some of the sunshine that we've been having as we continue to look forward into spring. Um, but I'm excited where our series is continuing to go on distinct. Um, we've been looking uh, the last few weeks at the story of Exodus and that book in the early part of the Bible and how God has made a people group, uh, the Israelites, distinct. Um, and this week, Eric spoke on specifically the presence of God. And through their wanderings in um, throughout the desert and following Moses around, uh, why he made their why he made them distinct and why the presence of God mattered in their life. And there were a few things that really spoke to me and that I thought were, were key points through the message this week. This idea that the presence of God guided the people, right? They were walking through the desert trying to figure out what's next and going towards the promised land. And God guided them with his presence. Um, and he wanted an intimate relationship with them. Right, they uh, he gave very specific instructions on how the tabernacle was going to be built and how um, he would eventually be moving in with them. And the presence of God would actually look to glorify Himself through others. Right, we see how Moses, when he went up to meet with God, um, his his glory shone shone on Moses so much that when Moses came back down to the people. He was literally glowing. Like the presence of God, uh, when we have that presence of God, when we have spent time with God, that'll show to other people. So the presence of God matters. Um, and I'm excited for you guys today as we look at what that matters for us and how we can have some conversation around that. So kids, if you're in the room, um, the leaders should have some group questions. You can either find these online or you can pick these up at any time in the uh, airlock. So uh, leaders, if you want to walk the kids through their questions, they're on the back here. Um, and then adults will jump right into groups content for you guys. All right, everybody. So for the first question, it always goes back to the challenge from last week. Um, the challenge last week was to ask God to show you areas in your life where you need to find balance. Um, what is one area that God illuminated to you, so like shown to you? Uh, what was one area God showed you was an area that you may need to find balance in? All right, for question number two, start by reading Exodus 19, 3 through 8. All right, after reading that, um, what does God offer to the Israelites after you read that? And think back to the beginning of the series. What other covenants have we read about so far? How many other ones can you see? Um, and what do we learn about God from this specific covenant? All right, for number three, start by reading Exodus 32, verses 1 through 10. Now, what do you notice about the Israelites in this specific story? Um, and are there ways that you feel like you can relate to them? All right, keep reading along Exodus 33, verses 7 through 16, and then we got a few more questions coming out of that. Now, this passage uh, that you guys just read comes on the very heels of the golden calf. When Moses went up to the mountain and the Israelites felt like he was gone too long, and so they 
felt like they needed something to worship, they crafted this golden calf. Um, So this verse is coming right on the heels of that. What do you notice about Moses' request in verse 15? Is this a posture that you carry in all of your walks of life? Why or why not? All right, for number five, reading from Exodus 33, 18 to 19, and Exodus 34, 5 through 7. All right, so after reading these two passages, what do you learn about who God is? And what characteristic of God do you... of what characteristics of God most speaks to you in this season, right? What, what does that look like? And what characteristic of God is hardest for you to believe? So for number six, uh, we talked about this weekend, Eric uh, said in his message that the, the presence of God among Israel is what made them distinct. That is what made them different. In the same way, the presence of God makes us today, like us right now, just as distinct. Um, read Hebrews 1.3 and Colossians 1.5. And what do these verses tell you about who Jesus is? Now also read Ephesians 1.13 and then 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 19 through 20. And what do these verses tell you about the Holy Spirit and the presence of God? All right, for the challenge this week, um, it's... It's really simple this week, and it's more of just a posture that we can, we can have and an action to follow it. Um, pray together tonight, so starting off tonight, and then pray throughout the week that the presence of God would be manifested in you. Um, there's a verse that goes along with this from Ephesians 3. It says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And I pray that those things may be manifested in you. So pray together right now and then um, continue. Challenge yourself to pray throughout the week that Christ's love would be manifested in you. All right, groups, that is it for questions today. Um, I hope they were life-giving to you, and I hope it sparked some good conversation. If you got some time and want to jump into the digging deeper section, we look a little bit closer at uh, how David, so King David, the one um, who David and Goliath, right, that David, um, how David uh, really influenced, or he, he was able to interact with the presence of God in a very different way. So that's coming out of Psalms. So if you got time and want to look at that story of David and how he saw the presence of God, take a look at that. Otherwise, um, I hope you guys have a great week and we will see you all very soon.